All right, so today we're gonna go over AWS Amplify and how it differs from Firebase and which one you should use, whether you should be even excited for AWS Amplify and what exactly it is. Before we get into it, I wanna mention that this is just a little intro video. We're not gonna go in-depth analysis of how the performance increases by 0.2% on whichever platform, but kind of how to use it, what the future for it is, and kind of the pros and cons of Firebase and Amplify. So let's go over what exactly is AWS Amplify. So it's pretty much a replacement for Firebase. It's a cloud platform that allows you to store, authenticate, and all this other stuff within the cloud infrastructure. But the big difference is while Firebase is using the Google Cloud Platform, AWS Amplify uses AWS Platform. Now, if you don't know, Firebase actually isn't the actual service that is being used within the Google Cloud Platform. Google Cloud Platform has a whole bunch of stuff and Firebase just kind of makes it easy for you to use. So with Firebase, we don't have to worry about load balancing and things like this. Firebase makes it so you don't really gotta worry about all that stuff and you can just focus on the simple things and get your app started. So AWS Amplify is trying to do the same thing with the AWS services. The goal is to make it easy for developers to get started using their services and be able to get their apps developed more quickly. So you can read through the AWS Amplify site and kind of get a better understanding of what it is, but you can see it supports authentication, data store, hosting, users, APIs, functions, CICD, all this other stuff. Now, if you go to pub.dev, there's the AWS Amplify.com is the publisher and they have a bunch of packages owned by them. And the main package is Amplify Flutter. So this is like the Firebase core package. And you can see it was only released in 2021. So January, 2021. So it's a really new package and um, Flutter support for AWS Amplify is relatively new. Before we get into the pros and cons, I wanna give you a comparison of the different services that they provide. So for the Firebase auth package, there's an equivalent package called auth cognito or just cognito. So this one takes care of authentication for AWS Amplify. Then we have storage, which in Firebase is called Firebase storage and AWS Amplify is called Amplify storage. So, so those are pretty equivalent. If you're curious, the uh, storage is using the S3 service from AWS. Then we have cloud functions from Firebase and then we have an equivalent Lambda functions from AWS. And then to actually store data, we have Firestore from Firebase, and then we have Data Store plus AppSync from AWS Amplify. So this one is a little bit more complicated, but it's also a little bit more powerful maybe too. Now each of them have some other differences. Like for example, Firebase has analytics, it has uh, push notifications using cloud functions, it has ML kit for machine learning. And then on the Amplify side, it has things like CICD, analytics, ML predictions as well, but not all of these are implemented with Flutter yet. And here's a quick overview of what two environments look like. So if you're using Firebase, this is the console you're probably familiar with. We have authentication, we have Firestore, real-time database storage, hosting functions, machine learning, and then other sections like this. To be honest, I don't use most of them. That's why we're only going to go over some of the top ones that are most used. But Amplify has the same thing. They call this the admin UI. So they have user management, content, data, authentication, functions, storage, GraphQL, API, REST API, analytics, predictions, interactions, and notifications. Again, I haven't used most of these at the bottom, but we're gonna go over the basic ones that are the most common, I think. So let's go over the pros and cons of each cloud service, especially with the context of Flutter and the pros and cons to use it with Flutter. The biggest one for Firebase is it's mature, maybe not as mature it will be in a couple years, but people have been using it with Flutter as the main cloud service probably the whole time Flutter's been out. It's pretty much a hand-in-hand go-to option for any Flutter developer to use Firebase as of today. And it's also part of the Google ecosystem. As you know, the language Dart is made by Google, Flutter, the framework is made by Google, and Firebase, the cloud server, is also made by Google. So I'm sure the teams talk to each other over there at Google and they've made it so that all these services work well together. Another thing, this might be an opinion a little bit, but I think the Firebase console is really nice. It's super easy to use. You can watch your data update real time whenever you update it in the app. And overall for me, it's been a great experience whenever using uh, the Firebase console. And now there's only one real, one real con that kind of sticks out to me and it's only a negative for certain projects. Firestore 
is a NoSQL database, which means it doesn't handle relational data too well. If you have an app that uses a lot of relationships, Firestore might not be the best solution for that type of app. But most of us on this channel probably already are familiar with Firebase and what it delivers. So let's go over the pros and cons of Amplify. So one of the first things I noticed and learned about AWS Amplify is that the data store service, which stores your data, does it locally. If you're only using the data store, you're storing files in a local database on the actual device. That means you're not syncing any data to your cloud service. Then you pair it with a service called AppSync, and then that automatically connects your local database and the database in the back end. So you can have all your stuff synced up locally and on the cloud. Now this seemed a little weird for me at first, but that's I think that's only because I've worked with Firebase exclusively. But then as I was thinking about it more, it seems to make a lot of sense. So while editing, I noticed that apparently Firebase can do this too. So for the rest of the video, if I refer to this as a big difference with AWS, just know Firebase probably can do this as well. With this approach, you don't really have many issues with not being able to connect to internet, for example. All your stuff is still working locally, but then whenever you do connect to internet, it syncs up to the cloud and you have your data there. That's also nice because you don't need an extra dependency if you do need to store stuff locally. You just use a data store from AWS Amplify and you're good to go. But let's say you don't want to store stuff locally, that becomes a little bit more difficult to implement. You got to use the GraphQL API or some other API to connect directly to the backend, but I'm sure it's not too bad and definitely doable. And I think those scenarios would be pretty rare where you wouldn't want to store stuff locally at all. But I guess I'm not the expert on local databases and what should be stored there and not. The next big pro is that it looks like they're planning to have a lot more options. So one of the big ones that sticks out is they have a CI CD almost set up to use with Flutter. So you can connect to your GitHub and you have a continuous integration and continuous deployment already set up with the same cloud service that you're already using. Of course, more of these options will come as AWS Amplify matures. And as of now, Firebase definitely has more options overall, but I'm pretty sure Firebase doesn't have a CI CD option, which will be pretty cool to have. Then they also have an Amplify CLI. So you, this is a CLI tool that you can install locally and it makes it really easy to implement a lot of things that even though they're not tough with Firebase, it just becomes one line of code inside your terminal and it gets you up and running. One example of this is initializing an Amplify project within your own project is literally just a line called Amplify init. And then you go click some yes and some check marks and stuff and you're good to go. With Firebase Console, you got to copy paste some stuff into some files and, and do all those things, even though they're not complicated, they do take up a little time and it would be nice to do it with one command. But also on the flip side, even though Amplify is just one command, it takes like five to 10 minutes to get set up. So I guess you have your own differences for that one. The next thing that I don't have much experience on, but from the very limited experience, it seems pretty cool is GraphQL. So GraphQL is a protocol to read data and it seems to make reading more complex pieces of data a lot simpler. For example, you could read stuff within documents, within documents, and only retrieve the data that you actually need instead of the whole document. From the limited exposure that I have to it, it seems to be really cool and kind of like the future of reading data from databases. This also makes relational data a lot easier to work with. Next thing with AWS Amplify, it's really easy to set up multiple environments. So you can set up a development environment, a beta environment, and then a production environment. And you can do this all within the same project. And while you could do the same thing with Firebase by setting up different projects, it makes it really easy and kind of together within AWS Amplify. And then the last pro for AWS Amplify is that you can visually work with the data. So you can create your GraphQL data models in the actual admin UI where you can visually create the models and what relationships they have with what. So now let's get to some of the negatives of AWS Amplify. First things first, and it's kind of a big one, it doesn't have null safety yet. So if you're working with Flutter 2, you're working with trying to have a null safe environment, you can't do that if you're working with AWS Amplify. Now I'm sure they're working on that and it'll be out soon, but as of the recording of this video, it is not. Next thing is it's very new at this point. It's only been out for three-ish months, so you can definitely expect to have some bugs in there that just are tough to explain and maybe even 
they're not really bugs. Maybe it's just features that aren't fully explained and you can't really go to Stack Overflow and look up the issues because there might not be that many people using it yet. This next part, the admin UI within the actual console of your AWS Amplify project is a little less nice than the Firebase one. Although it's still not bad and definitely usable, there are some things that are a little annoying when you're coming directly from Firebase. For example, if you're mashing the button of a counter and it's supposed to be updating with AWS Amplify, you're not going to see that update real time in the database. Although that's a little thing, it's kind of something we've gotten used to with Firebase and a little bit annoying to switch over. But I'm sure it's not really that big of a deal. It's just we've been a little bit spoiled. So now I quickly wanted to go over what it takes to get each one up and running. So with Cloud Firestore and Firebase Auth and Firebase Core, we know about these three packages. You import them, you go through the little flow that Firebase provides you, and you get it initialized in your project. With Amplify, you get a very similar thing. You import your packages, so Amplify Flutter, Data Store, and the API is what allows you to connect to the actual database. So this is the app sync that I was talking about, and then Auth Cognito is the authentication. So we're not gonna go over the Firebase one because I have videos on that, and I think a lot of people are used to this one. So you go in, you put the Android files in there, you go to the Gradle and all that stuff. With Amplify, all you have to do is Amplify in it. And it asks you all this stuff. You go through it, click yes or no, and it will initialize your project and you're ready to go. We're not gonna go through that, but it's pretty easy. You just kind of click yes for most of them. After you get done with this initialization part, you'll get a file called Amplify Configuration. So in this configuration, you'll have all the plugins that you need to use and basically your configuration for your whole Amplify project. Let's say you want to add authentication configuration to the project. As long as you have the pubspec.yaml file with the authentication, all you have to do is Amplify, add auth. For me, auth has already been added to this project. I could update, but it's pretty straightforward as well. Just a bunch of yes and no's. Also, one key thing to remember is the databases and your configurations are separated from what's locally here and what's on the actual cloud service. So whenever you change something on one end, you wanna do either an Amplify pull or an Amplify push. And this will push whatever database changes you've done through the CLI to your cloud service and vice versa if you're doing a pull. So for this one, we have no changes that we needed to push, but we see we have the API and the auth service here. And that's pretty much how you get it up and running. So then with Amplify, you'll get a folder called models. And this one, you'll have a model provider, which you can use throughout your app to get access to all the different models. And then you have, for example, mine is a counter app. So it's a counter model. You have the ID, UID, and the count for each person. And this allows you to do all sorts of stuff with the data. It's a model, just like you know all the other models from Flutter, but the only difference is coming from a cloud service. And actually there is one more folder that Amplify creates that I missed and it's this Amplify folder. So in here, I think the main file you'd wanna use is the schema.graphql and you can actually define what type of models you have and then you can update, you can push and pull to update your configuration in the cloud as well. And just in case you wanna quickly check how to initialize this stuff, it's pretty straightforward, but you initialize Firebase using Firebase.initialize app and Amplify, you do Amplify, add plugins, what plugins you want to initialize with, and then you do Amplify Configure. So at this point, you're ready to use AWS and Firebase with the authentication and the storing, and uh, from here, it becomes very similar. You can refer to the documentation of each and they'll be pretty straightforward. And I have videos on Firebase and I'll probably make some videos on Amplify as well. So all right, that's a quick breakdown of the differences between AWS Amplify and Firebase. They're actually a lot more similar than you would think and pretty easy to use for both of them. I must say overall, I'm really happy that AWS Amplify is released. Uh, I think competition drives innovation. So you see how AWS Amplify is CICD and you can set up multiple environments. I'm sure if these features are very successful for them, Firebase might have to implement something like that on their end. So I hope it becomes a viable competitor long-term. I'm not sure which one I will use yet. We're gonna have to see how things turn out. But just the fact that we have multiple options now is a win-win for everybody. My quick opinions about the features and the developer experience of each is I think Firebase at this point has a little bit more features, but AWS has some features that could be very critical depending on what project you're using. 
If you really need a relational database, AWS might be the way to go for you. But I think at this point, the developer experience is definitely a lot better with Firebase. There's more content on Google and on Stack Overflow, more documentation, more people using it, and thus it's more mature. The console is a little bit better and overall, maybe I'm just more comfortable with it, but it just seems nice to use. While AWS Amplify isn't bad, it's still pretty early and I'm assuming it's gonna get a lot better in the future. So to wrap up, if you wanna learn more in depth about each of the services and pricing and stuff like that, I'll have a link to Fireship's video. He did a comparison of that. And his outcome was that the pricing is pretty much similar and that Firebase is easier to use, but AWS Amplify allows you to have more configuration of your project. And I think that's a great way to summarize it, but you should go try it out yourself and let me know what you think in the comments. So anyway, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next week.